been given the Hugh Parry chart, um, which was made uh, for Hugh Parry, who helped make the Cruel Sea. And I was endeavouring to put on the positions of all the ships that were lost in the North Atlantic during the Second World War. And I needed a special book. And I put a... a Radio Merseyside said that they would allow me to broadcast. So I broadcast, has anybody got this book? And I quoted the book and all the rest of it. Uh, could they loan it to me or sell it to me? Uh, a few days later, I got a phone call. I'm sorry, Stan, I haven't got the book. I've got the chart. And I said, you can't possibly have the chart. This is the only one in the world and we have it. Your chart, you can't have this. And he said, look, Stan, I'll come and bring it over and show you. And he arrived at Fort Perch Rock where we were then. And there was another chart made by a Canadian master mariner of the Labrador Sea. And he, to get rid of all his inhibitions, because it must have been a terrible time during the Second World War for everybody, he had marked on, the ch on this special Labrador chart where every conceivable ship, whether it was German submarine or, or British ship or British or Canadian, they were all marked where they'd been sunk. And this, he made a magnificent job. But this chart had a history. It had been presented to the, in the Canadian Parliament to a senator there who had heard that the poor old Canadian merchant seamen never got a penny towards their pension for all the time during the Second World War. The Army, the Navy and the Air Force all got it, of right. But the poor old merchant navy, who was at the bottom of everybody's pile, got nothing. And this senator thought it was a diabolical sin, and he fought and he got it. And my master mariner thought, this guy is terrific. I'll give my chart to him. So it was presented to the senator, and everybody was very happy. Unfortunately, the senator died. And this young man that brought it over to me said uh, he had he gone over to Canada to get a memento of his uncle, who was the senator. Jack Marshall, I think his name was. And he had seen this chart in, in the house of, of Jack. And he thought, this will be super. I'll take that home and I'll put it on my wall. It'll be ideal in my living room. And then he gets this SOS from Stan uh, for a book, which he hadn't got, and he mentioned the chart. So he brought the chart, and this was the history of the Labrador Sea chart, which was a unique, it was exactly the same as my chart for the North Atlantic that given to Hugh Parry. And so we very well, he said, no, if you've got the first one, you've got to have this. And we got it, and it was magnificent. We had two unique charts to show how the merchant navies and all the others had, had helped win the Second World War. So it was up there, but the fort is a very damp place, and eventually it started to deteriorate. You'll see when you see the photographs, the original one had a blue surrounding. My, the one now is, is white. The blue got all distorted with damp and all the rest of it. And I got very upset and the rest of the team. So we took it down and we took the, pic, took the chart out and made a copy. And then got somebody to make a frame for me. We put it all back and there it was. That was the one. And I took the other home uh, to preserve it. And we saw the Battle of the Atlantic was coming up and we thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could present this chart back to the Canadians? And I tried and I tried to get the naval attaches and of the UK and all the others to listen to me, but nobody, I'm, a, I'm somebody nobody knows. So I spoke to Pat Moran, who is the font of all knowledge. And he said, listen, Stan, ring this number. And I rang that number. And the naval attaché I spoke to was absolutely amazed. He said, wow, that can be the centerpiece of our Battle of the Atlantic ceremony. 
So he said, uh, we issued us with special certificates and I said, can I come in my, in my second World War radio officer's uniform and I want to bring my communications officer, uh, Bob Bunker, uh, and we, oh, you can bring who you like, you can wear what you like, just bring it down, it'll be fine. So we, we put the chart aboard the ship first and then in the evening, on that Sunday evening, we went and were introduced to the captain and all the rest of and all the dignitaries and they s supplied us with moose milk, which I'd never had in all my life. But by gum, what a kick that has. And eventually it came for me to speak. We presented it to the captain of the Iroquois, I gave a speech and told them about how it had come to our attention and how we wanted to give it back to the people of Canada. They had supported us right from the very start. It went back on the flagship and it now resides in the wardroom of the uh, Saxville. Uh, so this is what it's all about. Mm. The Canadian Naval Attaché gave us a Canadian flag as a token. Now, we, we were going to put it on the light ship, but unfortunately, we, we've lost the light ship for now. But we thought it would be ideal if we fly it on the Francis Hayhurst. And here we are now to, of the sequel about the chart and the flag. So we want to hoist this on the Francis Hayhurst We'll get our communications officer to hoist it and show that we're so proud to show this flag. As you know, they are part of, of us. They're part of the Second World War. We're all on this planet together and we've got to work together because it's something special.